Hi, in this video I'm going to show you uh, how to build a shopping application and the purpose of this application is to show you how the VLOOKUP works and uh, what I'm showing you here applies to Excel, LibreOffice and OpenOffice and I've uh, built myself now a spreadsheet, just a simple spreadsheet here I have a, a data table and some another table called item level. Now, the way this application is supposed to work is like this. Let's say I put in bread and define the quantity. Now, I want bread's description to, uh, to, to, uh, to appear automatically, its units, its costs, and a certain comment. Now, um, the stuff that I usually shop, I put that in a separate table called data, and there it is bread, beer, coal, and apples, the description of each of these items, the quantities, you know, the quantities it's being sold as, in, in, in terms of bread, it's like 500 grams, in terms of beer, it's six cans, etc., and the price of each of those items. And I advise you, when you um, build an application in Excel or in any spreadsheet application, um, always have your data in a separate table. Never put your data in here somewhere. Because this is now the, the the shopping application. That's where the user puts in, you know, what he needs and the quantity he needs, and then automatically here uh, the description and, and other stuff is going to appear. You don't want to put your reference table in here. Just put it in a separate sheet, like this. It's much easier. And uh, the nice thing about it, if you have another application, now we have here this shopping list application. This uh, requires that data. Now, if you want another application, you just put another table, you know, which uh, where where you have that other application, and it can still use that data. So you have that data as a central uh, place for all other applications to reference. So once you you update your 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 data table, like if I add like peers and tomatoes, all other applications using that data will benefit from that uh, from that uh, update. Okay, now how do I get that? I want, let's, let's start with the description. Once I type in bread, I want to have that stuff appear automatically. And that's what the, what the VLOOKUP is for. What the VLOOKUP does is basically, it takes bread, because that's what I'm trying to look up, and returns that. Okay, and the way it goes is like this. You can call the function wizard, and uh, look for VLOOKUP. It's under V, 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 V. Here it is. And then next. Now, the VLOOKUP, it has four parameters. It requires four parameters. First of all is search criterion. Well, search criterion is the, is the thing we're trying to look up. What are we trying to look up? Well, bread. I mean, you could, you could imagine the VLOOKUP is like a dictionary. I want to know the description of bread. So, what I look for in that dictionary, when I got open that dictionary, what I look for? I look for bread, not for description. I need to, to know the description of bread, so I, I look up bread. And that's the lookup term here, bread. So I just, I don't, I, no, I don't write bread, but I click on that cell. Okay, so there you go, A2. Now, array. Array is the table where everything is listed. It's basically your dictionary. For us, it's, it's that table data, and it's gonna be, let me just take that away, it's gonna be all that content. Now I could select something like that. And that's okay, and it's, 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 quite, it's quite correct. However, in real life applications, your, your data normally grows with time. So you don't wanna select just, you know, the data you have right now, but you want to have you, you want to have you want your selection to to contain uh, any other possibilities basically all the empty space down here so uh, in excel what you do you just you, you can select the columns you don't have to select a, a certain range just select all columns between a and e in this case so you got anything you add is going to be incorporated in that array now uh, unfortunately in libreoffice i cannot do that but i cannot uh, uh, um, select the columns like that, it'll give me an error. So what I can do is basically, instead of having it end at five, I'll just add a number, let's say 65,000. So that means my uh, array is in the table data, 
starting from A2 and going down to E65,000. So I got a lot of empty space down here where I can add stuff in for later. Okay? Now, one thing is very important. Let me go back to the shopping list. I'm planning to drag that, uh, to copy that formula down for the other lines. Now, when you when you when you drag a formula down, those cell references are gonna change. A2 is gonna become A3, A4, etc. The same thing here. Now here it is not desired that, that that those cells change. So what you gotta do is you gotta fix them. And that you do with dollar signs. With that in Excel, you do it with F4. You just click here and then you click on your F4 key. And in uh, in Open Office or in uh, in LibreOffice, you 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 type in Shift F4. Wow, well, it doesn't work here. It doesn't work here. Wow. You see, I I have oh, I'm just gonna type them like that. I have to use uh, LibreOffice here because my Excel is a German version. So um, you know I'm not gonna buy an English version just for the video. So I'm just using uh, LibreOffice for this for this purpose. But what I'm finding out is that you can't, with Shift F4, it doesn't work. So I have just typed in the dollars. What that means with the dollar signs, that means that when I, when, I, when I drag that or when I copy that formula down, those cell references don't change. And that's exactly what we need. All right. Now we come to the index. What is index? Well, what do we want from the dictionary? We want the description. Now, in which column is that? You might say it's in column B. That's right. But what we want is the column number, not B, but two. This is column one, this is column two. So I put two, okay? And you already see the result here is white loaf of slide. And it's exactly what we want. Now, sort order, well, here in sort order, you can put one of two things, either zero or one. I'm gonna put in zero now. I'm gonna explain later when you do, uh, when you, when do you do uh, zero or when you input one. I'm just gonna put in zero. And there you go. Okay. And there we go. And if I say beer, I got a description of beer. And if I say apples, I got that. Okay, so there we go. And now I can drag that thing down. And I got a lot of NA. NA means not applicable. Why? Because we got nothing. Once I type in something, I got that. See? And once I do something like that, I got not applicable because that thing is not in our dictionary. Neither is the empty space. Now, once I drag a formula down like that, I mean, it's not wrong, but it looks quite ugly. So what you can do, that's another thing for real life applications. You, you can, you can uh, solve this problem in one, two ways. You can either put uh, you, you, uh, build a more complex formula and use, a, use an if uh, function in here, but there's a simple, a simpler way to do that. And basically, you go into data, add a new uh, line, uh, sorry, insert uh, cells. And what we do here is zero. So basically, this, this line this this line applies for no content and now I have to change my formula because it, it starts at a3 and it has to go from a2 you see the reason it went it was at a3 the reason it went to a3 because we inserted that line and our original bread line went to a3 and we don't want that we want to have the a2 again so I just change it and I have to there you go. And now, because this is all is covered by this thing, and it's all empty, I'm, I don't have this ugly stuff anymore. I can drag my formula down. Let's drag it to here. And now, if I write something in, I got red apples. If I don't write anything in, I get that. Obviously, if I write that, it's it's it, you get this error but that's okay because this way I know all right I don't have any peers in my in my uh, in my um, uh, uh, data table so either I add them or I just uh, forget about it okay all right let me let me put another item let's say apples 
and let's say five. Okay, now we need the units. Now the units, the way I, need, I like the units uh, are like that. We know that bread is 500 and grams. I'd like to have that together. So how do you do that? Well, it's the same thing. You use the same thing that we did here twice. Now, instead of using the wizard here, we're gonna use, do it manually. And the way you do it manually, you just, and that's when you get used to uh, VLOOKUPs or any other function for that matter, you're gonna start doing it manually. You, you don't use the function wizard anymore. So a function wizard is like training wheels. I mean, you do it for the first couple of times. Now when you get used to it and you know exactly what the function requires, you don't need it anymore. So equal VLOOKUP, then I open up. Now, what's the first thing that VLOOKUP needs? Is the search criteria and that's we're still we we're, sorry uh, did I did I just do something wrong here yeah here I gotta be here there you go now V lookup now what's what what are, we, what are we trying to look up we're trying to look up bread and find out its units so the search criterion is still bread still a2 there you go and now we need the array you put a semicolon and now we're in the second parameter and that is the array that's again our data we just select the whole thing yeah and I'm in my case because I'm using LibreOffice I have to do it manually 65,000 and now here I don't forget to do the F4 yeah now it works it seems to work um, in LibreOffice it seems to work when you do it manually but it doesn't work in the wizard but still, I find uh, F4 in Excel, it's F4. It's much more faster, much more uh, intuitive. Okay. Now, in which uh, uh, column is my unit quantity? That's in column three. One, two, three. All right. And sorting order, I'll just keep at zero. I'll explain that later, as I said. There we go. And I can, again, take that down. Okay, so you see the units appear now automatically and again here you see now when I drag a formula down a2 becomes a3 becomes a4 and so on but you don't want that to shift that should point to the same thing all over that's why we do those dollar signs okay now the units is okay halfways I'd like to have the I mean that's the 500 and one yeah okay but what 500 what I'd like to have the grams and cans, etc. So what you do, you gotta uh, 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 attach two things together. And the way you do that in, in, in spreadsheets in Excel or open Office is use an AND. Now I need a space between the 500 grams. So you open up your quotations, just have a space, close quotations, AND. And now I'd like to have a second lookup. And uh, you know what? I'm just gonna do the lookup again. What I do is like I can take this old lookup of mine and copy it, paste it here, and I just gotta change that one. That's the column index. Uh, the units, the grams, etc., they're in column D in four. So I just change that to four, and there you go. And then drag it down. And now I've got the units. Bread, two, that means that's a description. That means I'm getting two times 500 grams. Apples, five, I'm getting five kilos of apples. Now we get the costs. And the cost is, again, it is the quantity I purchase times the unit cost. Where's the unit cost? It is over here, or price, okay? So what, what column is that? That's column E or five. So Let's be lazy. I'll just take any uh, VLOOKUP I built. Let's say, let's take this guy, copy, just put him in here. And what do I do? I just change column two into column five. There you go. Now, that is not the true cost because that's a cost for one unit. I'm actually getting two units. So I just add, I just multiply that by, not sorry, not by two, but by the reference of, B, of B2 because that's what my quantity is. Okay, now 198 and just drag it down and there you go. All right. So now we have basically built that application. It's working nicely. Those zeros also don't look that great. The way you can get them away is like that. 
and then go into format cells oh boy is that slow you know that's why I prefer working in Excel um, and what you do numbers in Excel in Excel it's the same procedure you go over format cells and then numbers and you go take custom custom format and what you do is the following zero dot zero zero so what that means before the sun before the first semicolon that applies to all positive numbers they should be formatted as uh, uh, you know having two decimal spaces after the first semicolon we got negative numbers we don't have any so I just leave that empty and uh, after the second semicolon that applies to all zero numbers and those I wish to hide I don't wish to have a zero in there I wish to have nothing so I leave that empty as well and there you go it doesn't work either here well uh, that, that bugs me that bugs me but anyways in Excel it works I don't know why it doesn't work here um, yeah it doesn't matter Nah, doesn't matter. Uh, for some reason, it doesn't work here. But in Excel, it works. Uh, let me call that again. Um, what you do is, like I said, before the first semicolon, you have that applies to the positive numbers. Behind the first semicolon and, and before the uh, third, uh, sorry, behind the first semicolon, that applies to the negative numbers. And behind the second semicolon, that applies to all zero numbers. And if you keep that empty, let me try this. Maybe that's better then you don't have those ah that works so in in, um, in LibreOffice you have to put some uh, double quotes twice for empty and then it works see now we got nothing and I this way I hide those ugly zeros in Excel you don't have to put anything and it works okay great now um, what I'm gonna do I'm gonna stop this video here and I'm gonna do a second video for the comments because the comments, they work like this.